Just hang tight after it all ends. Don't go past here. Just stay where everyone is, and we'll make it work, okay? Thank you so much. We have a bar open inside, cash bar. And I'm told the cash bar is open inside as well.
Go ahead and get started in just a few minutes. If anybody uh, uh, needs a restroom, you s please see the building next to us here at Preve. If everyone, uh, anyone would like to uh, visit the beverage station, please see the restaurant here at Preve as well. And give a big thank you to Stavros from Anadel Terrace for allowing us to jo gather here tonight. We'll be starting in just a few minutes. Staten Island! Thank you for coming out to our annual Staten Island Republican Party Get Out the Vote Rally. In seven days, we have the opportunity to change the course of this state. The people that you hear on this stage tonight are the people that you need to go out, you need to vote for, you need to bring a neighbor to vote for, you need to make sure your family gets out. And we got people that already voted already. Fantastic. So, of course, we have our next governor, Lee Zeldin, joining us here this evening, along with Allison Esposito, the rest of our state ticket, Joe Pinion, Paul Rodriguez, and Michael Henry. We have our local candidates, of course, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, Senator Andrew Lanza, Assemblyman Mike Tanousis. At this time, please join me in welcoming our chairman of the Staten Island Republican Party, our Assemblyman, Michael Tanousis. All right, how are we feeling? What are we about to do on Tuesday? We're going to turn this state upside down. I am Mike Tanousis. I'm New York State Assemblyman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And I am proud to be the chairman of the Staten Island GOP. And we are here because we are in the fight of our lives. In the past two years as an assemblyman, I've seen the worst of the worst in Albany. 
And I was a Bronx prosecutor. So for me to tell you that, that means it's very bad. The difference in this vote will be the difference whether we stay here or move. It will make the difference as to whether me and my wife will want to raise our kids here or we're moving out. We don't have any other options. So I want to make it clear. This is it. This is our last stand. This is our chance to take our state back. You know, I couldn't help but see the debate, the one and only that she agreed to have with Lee. Well, yeah. And she, yeah, absolutely did. And what she was saying, that, oh, I'm a job creator. I create jobs. Oh, she creates jobs, all right. In Connecticut, in Florida, in Arizona, that's where people are moving to. She's not creating jobs here. Our public sa thank you. Our public safety has been compromised. And this is where we say no. So on three, Hokel's gotta go. 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 It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the most vocal, or one of the most vocal, union leaders of our city. Someone who is the president of the Detective Endowment Association that goes out there every single day and talks about public safety and has the backs of his men and women who put their lives on the line every single day. Day. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Paul DiGiacomo. <laughs> Who's going to win? Lee Zeldin. Who's going to win? Allison Esposito. Listen, this is make or break for New York City and New York State. 40 years in the New York City Police Department, I've never seen crime out of, out of control the way it's out of control now. Our politicians are focusing more on the, the criminals than the victims of crime. And the only way we're going to change that is to get the vote out and vote in Lee Zeldin, Allison Exposito, and all these fine politicians behind us. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, bail reform, we told them two years ago, we told the governor, we told the politicians that bail reform was not a good idea. It's not going to work. And ever since bail reform has been enacted, crime has skyrocketed in New York City and New York State. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that there's a direct correlation between the uptick in crime and when bail reform was enacted two years ago. Listen. Let's start focusing on the good, law-abiding people of this city and this state and not focusing on the people who commit the crimes. Let's get out to vote on Tuesday. Let's vote in Lee Zeldin, Allison Esposito. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I want to introduce the New York State Chairman of the Conservative Party, someone that has continued also to fight for us it does it in Albany and does it here at home, supported Lee from the very beginning, and sees the vision that we must win. I'm proud to introduce to you Mr. Jerry Kassar. So, what are we going to do next Tuesday? We're going to elect Lee Zeldin. What do we need? Change. Who's an agent for change? Is it Lee Zeldin. So what are you going to do? Vote. You, now, vote now. Don't vote often, but vote now. Vote early. Vote Tuesday. But vote. We are going to win. We cannot afford to lose. What does Zeldin always say? Losing is not an option. Thank you.
Next, I want to introduce our Republican and conservative candidate who is running for the West Shore Assembly seat. Someone that I could count on to be my partner up there as we fight the craziness that the Democratic majority has brought us. If you live on the West Shore of Staten Island, make sure to vote for him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce Mr. Sam Perizzolo. Hello, Staten Island. How are you? All right, listen, let's practice. I want to hear it. Zeldin, 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 Zeldin. All right, that's what we need to hear. So listen, I'm so happy to see so many of you. And what you've been hearing is true. We, need, we do need balance in the state. And we are anticipating this really big red wave. And there's no doubt. However, however, we're going to need more than that. We need you to speak to not only your family and friends that are Republican. We need conservatives. We need independents. We need blanks. We do need Democrats. This is a common, to, I hear you, but this is a common sense. One of my campaign slogans is, I am fed up. You are fed up. They are fed up. That's why, who are we electing on Tuesday? Zeldin. There we go. All right, one, one other thing I just want to say, and, and me, thank you very much. Listen, I, I spoke to someone about it before. A lot of people say they don't like early voting. I am telling you, if you can, get it done. So many people I speak to the day after Election Day, on Wednesday, on Thursday, have said, you know, I couldn't vote. I got sick. My grandson got sick. I got called into work. Please, this is too important of a race. The cavalry is coming. You are the cavalry, and we need everybody to get out there. So please get out, vote, bring your family, bring your friends, and bring Democrats to vote for Zeldin. 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 Thank you so much. Now, it wouldn't be a rally if we didn't have an activist here, right? Someone that tells you exactly how they feel and calls out people that he doesn't believe are doing the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mr. Scott Lebedo. How you doing, folks? How you doing? <clears throat> how you doing? Good. This is, this, listen, there's a lot of things that are sexy in this world, but this is fucking sexy. This is sexy. Sorry, that's the only curse word, I swear. Uh, listen, I'll make this short and sweet. I wasn't even supposed to be up here, but I wiggled my way in. Um, <clears throat> look, we all know, we've all, all, you know, all of us that have been in politics for so long, every election, oh my God, this is the one, this is the one, it's going to change the world. Folks, I ain't been doing this for 30 years, okay? This is the one. This is the last stand we have to save this country. Not 10 years from now, not 15 years. Right this moment, okay? And the most important, this is what we do from this day on for the next week. We reach out to the friends of ours who say, well, I'm a Republican, but I'm not going to vote because my vote doesn't count. It was rigged. The hell with that. You smack them around and you say, no, this is your more important than anybody else. Because if we do lose, it's not the Democrats' fault. It's the people that are on our side that didn't vote. So get on them. And last, quickly, we all have Democratic friends and family members. And what we need to do now, and you know how I've been aggressive towards them, now, this next week, we embrace them, we hug them, and we, te we tell them that we need you to come over, not just for us, but for your life just as well. So let's win this, baby! Thank you. Thank you. How am I supposed to follow that up? I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that up. But next, you know, as you know, I'm in the assembly, right? We have different candidates that run. Where's one of the most important areas we need good Republican candidates? In the judiciary, right? Don't you want a judge that's going to be able to fairly hear your case and make a decision based on the law and the facts? Well, I want to introduce to you two candidates 
that are running for judge this year. The first one is Brendan Lantry. I see he has a fan club here. He's the former chairman of our party. He worked hard to build up our judiciary, and last year he became a civil court judge. This year he's running for Supreme Court. So, and I also want to introduce Miss Mary Cavanaugh, who has invaluable experience working in the Supreme Court and will make a phenomenal civil court judge. I'd like to introduce both of them now. Give them a round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's so great to be at a Republican rally, my last Republican rally. Um, thank you so much for coming out here tonight. It's my honor and privilege to serve Staten Island in the civil court. Now more than ever, we see how we need fair and impartial jurists in our court. And, I, and I'm, proud, I'm proud to be a nominee of this party to be, uh, to be on the Supreme Court here in New York State. Um, in my former life, I was the chairman, so I do have to talk about a little housekeeping. Rallies are great. Love rallies. They, they make us feel great. But it doesn't mean anything unless we get out there and hit the streets. So every day between now and Tuesday, we will be at Republican Party headquarters at 2300 Richmond Road. Saturday, 10 a.m., please join me out at Republican headquarters, 2300 Richmond Road, the Old Moravian Florist. Please join us in getting out the vote this election season. I'm going to turn it over to my, my colleague and friend, Mary Cavanaugh. Thank you so much. This is an amazing crowd here tonight. Thank you all so much for coming out. I'm Mary Cavanaugh. I'm running for civil court judge. I am, <laughs> yeah, I am the Republican and conservative nominee. Today, I work as the law clerk to Judge Ralph Porzio in Staten Island Supreme Court. And I'm so proud of the work that we've been doing. And I just want to encourage you all to come out and vote. Um, I just want to say that I am also endorsed by the NYPD unions between the PBA, DEA, lieutenants, captains, and sergeants union. I'm also endorsed by the New York City District Council of Carpenters and my husband's union, the Uniform Sanitation Men's Association. That's New York's strongest. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Come out to vote. Get your family. Get your friends. Get your neighbors. Give them a ride to the polls. It is so important that every single person comes out to vote this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you at headquarters this weekend. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, who's doing an excellent job, by the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. So before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to say our minority leader, Joe Borelli, unfortunately, cannot be here today. As many of you know, he was one of Lee's first, first supporters, but he is currently in the city. He's doing an interview for Fox News, trying to fight the fight in the media. So God bless him. He couldn't be here today, but he sends his love, okay? Next speaker is a Republican member of the council. He sees the battle every day. Like I see it in the assembly, he sees it in the city council. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Carr. Are we going to save our state? Yeah. Are we going to save our state? Yeah. My name is David Carr, and I represent you in the belly of the beast, the New York City Council. And for too long, that institution has been dominated by DSA Democrats who have co-opted our city government, our state government, and Kathy Hochul has adopted their agenda from cover to cover. And we have to save our state because their policies are ruining the Empire State. This is a make or break election, and we're tired. We're tired of all the policies they've been imposing on us. Are you tired of cashless bail? Yeah. Are you tired of us being a sanctuary state? Yeah. Are you tired of our borders not being secure? Yeah. Are you tired of your children being taught to be ashamed of their country? Yeah. Well, we're going to change that all this week, and on November 8th, we're going to turn our state around by electing Lee Zeldin as our governor and Allison Esposito as our go lieutenant governor. And our judge, Brendan Lantry, said it best. It only happens if we get out there and we pull every single one of our family, friends, and neighbors to vote. They could vote early up until Sunday, November 6th, and November 8th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Get everyone out to vote. Talk to everyone, even the people you don't like, and get them out to the polls, and we're going to save New York. Thank you so much. The next speaker I want to introduce is the leader of our borough at Borough Hall. The person that is the common sense voice fighting against the city government and someone that you have been hearing from a lot recently as he continues that fight every single day. 
our borough president, Mr. Vito, Vito Fasella. Thank you, Michael. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for coming out. Appreciate it. Most importantly, I want to just make an announcement that the owner of Annadale Terrace said he's running a tab. So after this uh, rally, go ahead, help, help yourself, get whatever you want. Um, see? Uh, so we're, we're out here. I, I don't want to speak for my, my friends behind the, behind the line here, but uh, we prefer to be, I prefer to be on that side with all of you because we're here out of respect for you. We're here because we believe you are the greatest folks, not just in this city, in this state, but in this country. Staten Island, St Staten Island has a habit, uh, and it was about 30 years ago, and I caught out of the side of my eye a guy who walked in who helped turn this city around about 30 years ago, and that's Rudy Giuliani just walked in. Rudy. And... Duty. So some of the same people that are here today were standing with Rudy 30 years ago, and there were those who said the city was ungovernable, the state was done, and everybody was picking up and moving out. But at that time, there were those of us who believed, you believed, we believed, Rudy believed, and we turned not only Staten Island around and the city around and ultimately the state around, so we did it once before, and we can do it again. And let me just say this, because I know you have a bunch of other speakers that are far more intelligent and better, better looking and better, uh, better spokespeople than I am. We're here together because we believe that we live in the greatest country in the world and that we deserve better than what we have right now. You heard, you heard, you heard from the men and women in blue. They're up here telling you that their members' lives are on the line every single day. And if we don't back the blue in the next few days, goodbye, New York State, and we're not going to let that happen. God bless you, and we'll see you on Tuesday. So going off what Vito just said, I do want to thank Steve Bakusis, who owns this space and was nice enough to give us this space and is always there for us. So if you can, please patronize and support him across the Anadel Terrace if you can. It really goes a long way. Now our next speaker, and I'll tell you this because I've seen it, our next speaker is the Deputy Minority Leader in the State Senate. Now what does that mean for the Senate? That means that he's the one that argues against the bills. All the crap that, the, that they put through, he's the one that argues against. And I gotta tell you, some days I feel bad for the Democrats <laughs> because, of the way he does, because of the way he does it. I want to introduce to you Senator Andrew Lanza. Wow, look at this. Did he say, did he say, I want to introduce you to my sisters. Bacusis, it rhymes with Tanusis. How is our chairman of the Republican Party doing? Mike Tanusis. He's doing a great job. It's true. I am the floor leader for the Republican Senate. And I have to tell you that I take pride every second of every day fighting for every single one of you and for freedom across the state of New York. This election presents the greatest contrast in the history of gubernatorial races in the state of New York, period. Have you seen the latest commercials? from Hochul. The governor of the state of New York, Kathy Hochul, is lying about her record and she's lying about Lee Zeldin. And why do you think that is? Smartest people in New York right here on Staten Island. Because she cannot afford to tell the truth about her record because she is afraid that the people of New York are starting to wake up and they know the truth about Kathy Hochul. And as more and more people wake up in New York and understand the real truth about Kathy Hochul, 
we're going to send her packing. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I have had a front row seat to Governor Kathy Hochul up there in Albany. I have had a front row seat to the Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. And let me tell you what I have seen with my own eyes and heard with my own ears and watched in terms of the bills and the laws that she's created. Kathy Hochul, quite simply, is the most radical left socialist Democrat who has ever served in the governor's mansion in the state of New York, period. She does not want you to know the truth. That's why she's lying in commercial after commercial after commercial. She wants you to think all of a sudden that she is some moderate, middle-of-the-road, crime-fighting governor. Well, if she's been fighting crime in the state of New York as governor, she's the worst fighter in the history of the ring. Let me... Let me tell you the truth about Kathy Hochul. This is what I have seen her do as our governor as I sat in my chair in the New York State Senate chamber. She has supported the bail laws and the discovery laws, which have made it more dangerous than ever to be a, a police officer or a law officer in the state of New York. She supported those laws, which have made New York experience the greatest increase of crime that we have seen in generations. She has made through her disastrous, horrific, insidious, leftist policies, she has quite simply made it unsafe to be a New Yorker. She does not want you to know that. <laughs> Kathy Hochul's MTA chairman, Kathy Hochul's MTA chairman, last week before a group in Manhattan, suggested that we should be thrilled with the level of crime on our subways. This is how sick and out of touch they are. Here's another thing Kathy Hochul doesn't want to talk about, and this is sad and tragic. The number one preventable cause of death in New York State is drug overdose, fentanyl. Do you know why she doesn't want to talk about it? Do you know why she doesn't want you to know what it is that she has done about it, which is next to nothing, but it's even worse? Is because she supports the Biden open borders policies. She supports the soft on crime and not going after the cartel murderers who are killing our children. But let me tell you, she did one thing when it comes to drug overdoses in New York. Let me tell you Kathy Hochul's sick and depraved answer to the drug overdoses. She, she opened safe needle sites in New York. She appointed Dr. Death to be New York State's doc top doctor. Our health commissioner in New York State is the architect of safe needle sites in New York. Th this is what Kathy Hochul says. If you find your family member in the throes of addiction, tough luck, we give up, here's a clean needle, Consolation, if your daughter or son, God forbid, dies, just know that they died with a clean needle. This is sick and depraved, and this is what Kathy Hochul's response to the drug overdose problem is. Kathy Hochul, Kathy Hochul, I believe unconstitutionally, has refused to spend dollars in Republican districts. Isn't this the sort of thing that happens in tyran tyrannical companies, communist countries, socialist companies? There was money passed in the former budget to help our hospitals on Staten Island, to help our schools on Staten Island, to help groups all across Staten Island that are doing great work, including little leagues, including after school centers. And Kathy Hochul has refused to release those funds. Why? Because it's a Republican district. She's done that all over the state of New York. That's sick. That's got to change. What else does Kathy Hochul not want you to know about her? Why else is she lying? You remember, you remember all the COVID mandates that didn't save a single soul and yet destroyed the lives of businesses and families and children and students and classrooms. She doesn't talk about the vaccine anymore because we know the vaccine doesn't work. I don't say that lightly. I wish it did, but the proof is out there. It doesn't work. And she's still talking about making a mandate for five-year-olds. That is sick. <laughs> Kathy Hochul. 
Kathy Hochul stood by as her administration as Lieutenant Governor sent our seniors, our grandmothers and our grandfathers to nursing homes to die. Kath, of course Kathy Hochul is lying. She cannot afford, she can't bear for you to see the truth. Kathy Hochul was part of the mandates that said if you're a nurse, if you're a firefighter, if you're a police officer, if you're a sanitation worker, if you're a teacher, you get in the trenches and you save lives and you get COVID. And then once they did that, once they saved those lives and they contracted COVID and a mandate came out because vaccines came out, you know what she said to them? You're fired. As I said, this is the clearest choice we've ever had. Things don't look good out there across New York State. In fact, things are pl pretty bleak. We could turn it around. We're going to turn it around, not with a bunch of politicians. You're going to turn it around. We're going to embrace the American dream. We're going to understand and appreciate what America is all about. America has always been led by its people. It's always been led by people who can live their lives in freedom. It means that people like you and me, we're going to go out there, we're going to tell our family, we're going to tell our friends, we're going to tell our neighbors, we're going to tell them that we're hurting, that we know New York is headed in the wrong direction, that we want freedom, we want our jobs back, we want our lives back, we want our students back and our kids back, we want our safety back. And there's one way to do it, and it's to go out there and vote for, for Lee Zeldin. It's as plain as simple. I sat, I sat next to Lee Zeldin in the New York State Senate. You want to talk about a contrast between a governor, Governor Hochul, who believes that she gets to tell you what to do and not the other way around? You want to talk about a governor, Kathy Hochul, that believes government is here to suppress and oppress the people? Let me give you the contrast. I sat next to Lee Zeldin. Lee Zeldin is a patriot. He believes in the American dream. He believes in the American way. He believes the best way to a brighter future is to unleash the genius and the creativity in the people, our people, the New York people, the American people. He believes that we need jobs and opportunities. He believes that parents should raise their children and not some government bureaucrat. He served in, the, he served, he served in our military. He's proud of the flag. He's proud of our cops. He's proud of our businesses. He's proud of our families. And once he's governor, we're all going to be proud of him and the state of New York. So I have a great honor. I have a great honor. I have a great honor right now. I'm going to share a little story with you. Because if you're like a lot of my friends and neighbors, you're frustrated. Let's admit it. We're afraid. As a father, as a husband, I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm afraid. I'm afraid about tomorrow. I'm afraid about what New York is going to be. I'm afraid about what America is going to be. We're afraid for the future of our children and for our country. And with people say we're fear mongering, just look out your window. Look what's happening across America. Look what's happening in New York City. People are getting pushed in front of subways. Our children are dying from drug overdoses because of cartels that Kathy Hochul lets in our state. She flies them in in the dead of night into the airports. Don't despair. The power is in your hands. I know people sometimes say, what can I do? Can I do anything? You can. You can lead us the way you once led us. Borough President Vito Fasella mentioned it. Let me tell you a little story that I had a little front row seat to as well. When I came out of law school, I went to serve Robert Morgenthau, the gold standard for district attorneys as far as I'm concerned in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. When I got there, the first year that I served, a man by the name of David Dinkins was the mayor. Crime was out of control, just like today, maybe not even as bad. New York City seemed to be heading in the wrong direction. A year later, a new man came into office as our mayor, America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani. When I became an ADA under his predecessor's administration, I was wet behind the ears, just out of law school. What did I know? Not much, just like now. We, they were giving us felony cases. 
newbies at a law school because there were too many cases. Within one year of Rudy Giuliani at the helm in New York City, people were fighting over the so-called sexy felony cases because they were evaporating into thin air because of one man who led the police department and stood behind the police department. Rudy Giuliani turned the city around. Rudy Giuliani stands for everything that is great and American. Law and order, patriotism, the Constitution of the United States, and the chutzpah, and the stamina, and the strength to say to anyone who comes at America, go to hell, you're going to have to come through me. So, not too long ago, when you're asking what you can do tonight and in the next week, and if you're asking yourself, is it possible, can we turn it around? Not too long ago, the people of Staten Island, all of you, took New York City in your hands, and you turned it around, and you saved New York City by electing Rudy Giuliani. Well, guess what? Right now, all these years later, New York State, all of New York State is counting on Staten Island to lead the way again and to take back our state. And we're going to do it with people like Rudy Giuliani and Andrew Giuliani. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Now, I, I, uh, I had the pleasure of having dinner with Andrew uh, just a little while ago, and I, I really, f I kind of, I was a little worried about him. I hadn't seen him in a while. You know, he spends his time in what could effectively be thought of as an insane asylum. No, think about it. I mean, could you take it? No. no. It, Al Albany? No. I mean, for, uh, they, uh, <laughs> they're, they're thinking about a law so that they can mutilate children and not tell the parents? No. No way. So, I mean, that isn't just wrong. That's perver perverted. But I'm going to talk to you just about two things. I don't think you should get confused. I don't think the people of America should get confused. This election is about two things. And without these two things, <laughs> nothing else matters. Your safety and the ability to afford to take care of yourself and your children. Crime and the economy. And I've seen this city and state in the worst conditions. I took over, when I took over as mayor of New York, 75% of the people in the city wanted to leave. Uh, Staten Island was seceding. Remember? Uh, we were averaging 2,000 murders a year, and every year we have a big riot. You know, we didn't have a riot until a Democrat mayor came back. 20 years and no riots. Democrats come back. We got a riot. But in Albany, we've now had 20 years of Democrat elected governors. They got one big thing in common. They both had to quit because they were corrupt. They had to quit in scandal. They embarrassed the state. You don't want your children to know what they did because you don't want your children to be like them. Well, that is the Democrat Party in New York. It's rotten. It's crooked. And people are dying here because of their policies. When I was mayor, people were dying for lots of reasons, including their policies. Now it's just their policies. The reason for the crime rate in this city and state is real simple. Kathy Hochul, Andrew Cuomo, and the Democrat legislature. They are the reason for it. There must be, there must be people estimate anywhere from seven to 10,000 criminals walking the street wanting to kill you, rape you, rob you, who were in jail when I was the mayor. They were in prison, so they wouldn't hurt you. I, 
I and the Republican Party fight for you. We fight for your safety. We fight for the safety of your children. The Democrat Party today fights for the criminals. They put people out on the street that you can guarantee are going to throw people on the subway. And they don't give a damn. Because it's about two things for them. Power and money. The two that went out in scandal, the one there now has two or three big scandals. That nobody is looking at because she's a Democrat. Well, we can change that. Will Staten Island change that? Did you see the debate between her and Lee Zeldin? At least, I mean, at least, you know, the, we know the president doesn't know actually where he is. And now I introduce President Harris. They are making fools out of us. They are making fools out of us. But it's worse. They're imperiling our lives. And worse than that, the future, the education, and the decency of our children. Get your hands off our children. We don't want them to grow up like Cuomo or Spitzer or Hochul. We don't want them to grow up like crooked Biden. 31 million from China? Are we crazy? No, we're not crazy anymore. With the people of America, you're going to kick them out of office in a week. You're going to vote for your safety of your children. You're going to vote to take back your children's future with Lee Zeldin. And they're going to do it all over America. They have pushed us too far. Too far. They have pushed us too far when they want to experiment with the sexuality of our children. They've pushed us too far when people are getting thrown on the subway and they say the subway is safe. I know a safe city. I produced one. Do you know that the budget of this state is 220 billion? More than double the size of Florida. That has two million more people than we do. And I go back and forth between here and Florida. I don't no notice that the service in Florida is any worse. In fact, during the pandemic, they were allowed to live. Do you know how many people they damaged with their dictatorial, socialist, if not communist policies of locking people up, closing down their restaurants. They produced more suicides, more depression, more illnesses, because they didn't give a damn. They produced a fortune for the pharmaceutical companies. And now we've got We've got the state that people are running away from. I have several friends who have moving businesses. Making a fortune. They can't keep up with it. You can't keep up with it. People want to get out of here. That is the best reason to vote against her, isn't it? Don't, doesn't that tell you what you need to know? Shouldn't, shouldn't the states, the three or four states, with the largest number of people leaving, get rid of their governors? 
Doesn't that make sense? You also now have the government as the senior partner in your earnings. Now, here's what I mean by that. I don't mind paying taxes. I think it's wonderful, wonderful country. In fact, we should be spending a lot more on our military. I don't know, nobody mentions this, but we took a billion dollars out of the police department. That's called defunding the police. We never put it back. And this year's police budget is a reduction. So we defunded them by a billion. You know how many cops I had? 41,000. You know how many cops they have? If they're telling the truth, 33,000. You see a difference? Yeah. Allowed to do anything. Well, you look, you look at the riots of 2020, the cops had to watch as the criminals stole a thousand times we saw that. You don't think we taught them to do what they're doing? You don't think the Democrats taught them to do what they're doing? They know what's going to happen. They know what's going to happen. It's going to just be a short interruption. And they can go right back out and rob from you again. So you got to promise me. Promise me you're going to vote. Promise me you're going to get other people to vote. Promise me you're going to vote for Lee Zeldin. I got the entire ticket, his wonderful lieutenant governor and honest attorney general. And Joe Pinion knocked the hell out of Schumer. He knocked him right on the floor. That phony, phony Schumer. Boom. Joe Pinion knocked the hell out of him. And I'll leave you, I'll leave you with what's going to tell the history of this election. Hochul made probably the most, I would say, damaging and revelatory statement that Lee pushed her into when, in frustration, she said, why do you care so much? Now we know why we have so much crime. We have a governor that doesn't care. And now we know why we need Lee Zeldin, because he cares so much. Thank you. Who's next? Andrew? Come here. Good job. <laughs> he's going to let me... He's going to let me rest now. <laughs> but you're gonna, he, he deserves you're, it. You're going to come through, right? You're going to come through for Lee like you did for me? Yeah. Mayor Rudy Giuliani, ladies and gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Giuliani. It is an honor to be up here, standing here today in support of my friend, Lee Zeldin, who will be the 58th governor of the state of New York. Now, I was humbled back in June when Staten Island came out for me in the primary. And I will tell you, in one week, I will be humbled when I see Staten Island come out in droves for Lee Zeldin. But the truth is, and this is why Lee will be such a good governor, because it wasn't about Andrew Giuliani in June. It's not going to be about Lee Zeldin in a week. And it even wasn't about Rudy Giuliani back in 1993. It's about our kids. That's what it's about. That's what we're fighting for here, ladies and gentlemen. You know, at some point over the next couple of weeks, I want you to take a couple of minutes, and I want you to close your eyes and think about what New York State will look like in 2026 if Kathy Hochul is the governor and has four years. And I want you to think about how much more crime we'll have in New York. 
I want you to think about the fact that taxes will have continued to have gone up, that more and more businesses will be leaving for the likes of Florida and of Texas and of Tennessee. As a matter of fact, Lee had a special guest the other day in Long Island, some guy named DeSantis. Well, on the campaign trail, I used to joke and say after a very long first day of cutting regulation and starting to get crime straight and making sure that there are no more COVID mandates for our kids, that I was going to be making a call around 11 o'clock to a guy named Ron down in Florida and say, Ron, I got to tell you, I know you had it pretty easy with Bill de Blasio and Andrew Cuomo and Kathy Hochul, but now we can say, and we'll update the joke, Ron DeSantis is not going to have a realtor of the year in Lee Zeldin as governor of the state of New York. Because there are going to be more and more people that are going to want to come back to New York. There are going to be more and more businesses that are going to be looking at New York the way that it should. He's going to relight the economic flame that is New York. He's going to make sure that New York is the safest state in our country. And he's going to do it not because of him or any personal interest, but he's going to do it because of each and every one of our kids. Because that's what this is all about. That's what this election is about in, in a week here, ladies and gentlemen. So please, get out there and vote. If you're planning on knocking on 20 doors, knock on 30 doors. If you're planning on making 50 calls, make 100 calls. But ladies and gentlemen, let's do everything we can so that way on November 8th, we elect Lee Zeldin as our 58th governor of the state of New York. God bless you. God bless Staten Island. God bless New York, and God bless America. All right, how are we feeling? Are we pumped up? Are we going to win this race? Don't flee. Vote for Lee. Don't flee, vote for Lee. Don't flee, vote for Lee. Don't flee, vote for Lee. Okay, now I want to recognize some people that are here. In addition to Paul DiGiacomo, the president of the Detective Endowment Association, we also have Jim Gatto from the Sergeant's Benevolent Association that has also endorsed and supported Lee Zeldin, as well as Chris Monahan from the, from the captains. And we also have Mr. David Curcio, the Staten Island chairman of the Conservative Party. So let's hear it for them. Now, I want to introduce to you someone that's actually qualified to be the New York State Comptroller, Mr. Paul Rodriguez. Well, thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a banker, so I'm going to get straight to the point. Nearly two years ago, Congressman Lee Zeldin embarked on a mission to sound the alarm of the impending disaster that was headed for the state of New York. Much like the Titanic racing to that iceberg, Lee Zeldin was out there going to every corner of the state, sending out our SOS, save our state. And what is our iceberg? that we're facing, a rapid racing decline in our quality of life. The highest taxes in the nation, which we already had and were bad enough, but now a crippling cost of living that's getting worse, rampant corruption, a very unattractive environment for investment, whether it's a large or small company, and of course, what's glaring in the face of everyone the decline in public safety, the rise in crime, faster than at any other state or city in the country. And yet, the best that Kathy Hochul can say is, I don't know why that's so important to you, Lee. <laughs> or the rest of the Democrats say, hey, it's not that bad. We could be Chicago. But yet, we just found out Rochester is worse than Chicago now. What a cold comfort it is to those of us here. But in one week, if you haven't done so earlier, thank you, you, all of you, have the chance to right the ship and to save our state. 
Now, I'm old enough to know, remember the days of Guy Molinari. And I remember back then how Staten Island was such a powerful force in electing the best mayor that this city has ever had, Mr. Rudolph Giuliani. And now, in just a week, you have the power to elect Lee Zeldin as our next governor and save our state for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren. But I'm not leaving the stage unless you clap louder because then I think you're not getting it. Are we ready to save our state? I want to hear you. Save our state. Save our state. Save our state. Save our state. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Now, as a former prosecutor myself, I know the importance of having the state's top prosecutor be qualified and be fair and actually do what they have to do to put violent criminals behind bars. This is why we're supporting Michael Henry for Attorney General. And before he comes up, I just want to mention that Tish James is so scared that she's not going to debate him. So let's hear a little bit about that. Thank you all very much. I actually used to live right around the corner from here, so it's good to be back in the neighborhood. So last night we had some good news that a Trafalgar poll showed that Lee Zeldin has taken a lead over Kathy Hochul. And the last two Trafalgar polls, not one, but two, have me leading Letitia James for Attorney General. So on November 8th, we are not just going to fire Kathy Hochul, we are going to dismiss Letitia James from the Attorney General's office. I'm running to be your Attorney General because like all of you, I know things are not okay. We have a crime crisis, we have a corruption crisis, we have a cost of living crisis. We have people walking the streets in fear while criminals are doing whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want. Oh, wait, there's cameras here. So, Letitia James, if you're watching, you, you cannot run from your record the same way you ran from our debate. Because you ran on Cassius Bail in 2018. You got what you wanted and it failed. And if you think you're going to insult the intelligence of the voters and you're going to run from your record, they're not going to buy it. They're going to vote to dismiss you on November 8th. And I also heard that you started some negative ads against me, but you're not kidding anybody but yourself with those ads. Nobody's buying the nonsense. And if you're going to campaign on Twitter, don't use old pictures to try and trick people that you're in places that you're not. So... We have the opportunity to change this state. And Staten Island, we are going to win, but we need to run up the numbers. We are going to run the numbers up here. We are going to win this election. And together, we are going to tackle the crime crisis. We are going to tackle the corruption crisis. We are going to tackle the cost of living crisis. And we are going to put attorney generals on notice that when you want to use the office for your own political ambitions and for your own weaponization against your political opponents, your days are going to be numbered. Thank you all. Please get out and vote for the whole ticket. All right. Our next speaker has just come off a very successful debate, if you guys saw it on New York One. He is vying to take out Chuck Schumer. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Joe Pinion. Who's ready to fire Chuck Schumer? Yeah. For those that don't know, I am Joe Pinion, your Republican nominee, to ensure that after 42 years, 24 years in the Senate, we send Charles Ellis Schumer to the retirement home of politics once and for all. Yeah. 
You know, I've been traveling around the state. Most of you know, quit my job, went back to Yonkers, told my dear mother. She started weeping, and she said, what is going on here? Are you having some kind of midlife crisis? You're running against a man who had $28 million in the bank. And I said, no, America is not having a midlife crisis. Joe Pinion is not having a midlife crisis. We are in the midst of trying to ensure that we save this state and turn this country around. Some of you saw the debate between myself and the senator. And so now we know what the true stakes are. He said he was open to packing the Supreme Court. That means he's going to try to do it. He said he's going to try to mandate the jab for our children, which means that they're going to try to do it. Because for 42 years, he has been more consumed with getting power than he has been with empowering the people. I'm telling you right now, send me down to D.C. We're going to take that geriatric dinosaur. We're going to put him out the pasture. We're going to save this state. We're going to make sure this country works for all the people once again. Well, we, that's amazing. We got to make sure that happens. I also think we got to make sure this Fox News hit happens. So I want to be respectful here. But let's be very clear. This people that went down to D.C. in our name, they have turned our southern border into a gangster's paradise. They have allowed Mexican cartels to get together with the Chinese cartels. They have flooded our streets with enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child that calls this nation home. They have brought death to your front door, and they've done it with a smile on their face, calling it Ellis Island. No, it is a repugnant result of individuals who have no respect for the sovereignty of this great nation. I'm telling you right now, with your help come November 8th, we're going to restore America. We're going to secure our borders, we're going to make sure that we have a country that is worth that famous flag flaving in the air. We had a debate. People asked me, Joe, why you keep talking about the fact that the virus was a foreign origin? And I said, you can't solve a problem unless you acknowledge it. And here is the truth that that Chinese Communist Party released a plague on the world, then they lied about it, then they got the World Health Organization to cover up that lie. At a time when we needed the PPE supply to save the heroes, they hoarded it for themselves and then told us there was nothing to worry about. Hear me clearly, we get to DC, we hold that Chinese Communist Party accountable. First we send them, First we send them the bill, then we send them the sanctions, then we tell them never again. And so I want to close here because, again, we've got some speakers left, and we have to remember that we are here for a purpose greater than the day, to ensure that we have a New York state that is finally an empire state once again and send the Republican to the governor's mansion, Lee Zeldin. But this is a moment for all of us, that watershed moment in this state where we get to tell people where we were at that inflection point when we were tipping towards tyranny, the medical tyranny they've tried to shove down our throats, the people who forgot we were founded to escape tyranny of a king and never would abide tyranny of any government, and yet here we are in the throes of the tyranny of one-party rule. We have to make sure that we get the word out. Every single person that we know, even Sally at the end of our block that we don't like, we need to let them know that this is a state that is worth saving, that America is a nation worth fighting for, that we have an obligation that surely none of us can repay. For me, my obligation is clear. A beautiful woman named Ivy Alana Coons, my grandmother, who we lost at 100 years old, a woman who put the Bible in my crib, woman who put the fear of God in my spirit, and the woman who was forced to die alone because our government forgot that they, that we don't work for them, that they work for us, that they don't have the right to take our rights away, that our rights are given to us by God and no one else, codified on that famous parchment. 
we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense. If you want an America that is just again, we're going to fire Chuck Schumer. We're going to reach. And we're going to get rid of that woman, Kathy Hochul. If if you want a New York state that works again, we are going to fire Kathy Hochul. We are going to retire Charles Ellis Schumer. We've got a four for one sale. We get to fire Kathy Hochul. We get to retire Charles Ellis Schumer. We get to dismiss Tish. We get to discharge the Napoli. But we need your help to do it. So ride out like Paul Revere to let people know that Republicans are coming, that common sense is coming, that people who believe in the founding documents of this nation are coming, that we will never abide a government that wants to teach our children about the mechanics of sex before they know how to spell it, when they should know neither. This is the moment where we tell people, our children, our country, our state, and we're here to take it back. God bless you all, let's go get the job done. All right. He's on fire, that's right. Our next speaker was the common sense voice in the state assembly. She fought Albany, and now she has taken the fight in the federal government in Congress. Two years ago, she fired Max Rose. And unlike her opponent, Max Rose, she marches to support the police, not defund them. She has the union endorsed, law enforcement unions have all endorsed her, and she will win decisively on Tuesday. I want to introduce to you the one, the only, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. All right, are we ready to fire Chuck Schumer? Isn't Chuck? Isn't Joe Pinion unbelievable? Are we ready to fire Kathy Hoko? Are we ready to fire Nancy Pelosi? And are we ready to defeat Max Rose again? You know, they thought they were very clever. He was fired two years ago by you. And then they thought they were going to redraw the lines and put Staten Island with Park Slope to try to give him an advantage to come back. And what did we do? We fought it. We sued. We won. But now, between now and Tuesday, we need to tell every single person we know People across the political spectrum, whether they're a Republican, they're an independent, they're conservative, they're Democrat, doesn't matter. We need to let them know that every single crisis we are facing as a state and a nation has been created by one party Democrat rule. From our open borders, to our lack of energy independence, to our horrific foreign policy, to the economic policies that are hurting everyday Americans, to the public safety crises we are facing in America's cities like ours, where one out of 88, actually now this week, it's one out of 86 New Yorkers have been a victim of a major felony crime. And Kathy Hochul is telling you there's nothing to see here. Why do we want criminals in jail? That uh, it's only our perception. Talk about insulting New Yorkers. First she tells us if we don't like her policies that we should just leave the state. Now she's telling us that we should not believe what we're seeing and reading every single day in our papers. If she likes these policies, if she likes what Joe Biden is doing, if she likes the open borders, and you know what? Maybe she's the one that needs to leave, and it's to either Venezuela or communist Cuba. But here in Staten Island, where we 
love our flag, where we stand for our anthem, where we back our police. We want a nation that is secure. That means we want secure borders. We want to support our police. We want to give them the resources they need to do their job, not make their job harder. And that's what this race is truly all about. Because I believe it sincerely. You know, the Republicans that we have on Staten Island are very fortunate. And we fight like hell. But the problem is we need someone with common sense on the other line picking up the phone. And that is why we must, we must end one party Democrat rule at the city, at the state, and the federal level. And I'm telling you, we're out there every day speaking to people on the South Shore, on the North Shore in Brooklyn, Democrats, Republicans, and they're saying the same thing. The pendulum has gone way too far to the left. And they want a balance. They want common sense. And that's what we are going to deliver on Tuesday with your help. Now, it's critical. We have some sign-up sheets in the back. I know there's some sign-up sheets that were passing around the crowd. Or you could just show up at the Moravian Florist, 2300 Richmond Road. We truly need you all between now and Tuesday because we need to get the message out. We need to talk to everyone and deliver that message. We will take back our streets. We will take back our country. We will secure our borders. We will stop this in unsustainable spending. We will make America energy independent again. And we will make New York and America safe again. And we will make New York and America great again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, and it's my pleasure. You know, a couple of a couple of months ago, or maybe it was more than it was probably last year. Lee Zeldin asked me to chair his lieutenant governor search committee, and we really searched across the state, interviewed a lot of people, but I think we found someone who complements Lee Zeldin really well and really exemplifies what we need more than anything right now in our state, and that is public safety and common sense. Someone who served our city, someone who left her job, right? She could have stayed and retired, had a nice pension. She chose to leave because she understood that her officers were at risk every day and that the public she was serving was at risk every day because of the policies being put in place under Governor Cuomo and Governor Hochul. And so I am so honored, so privileged, so happy to welcome our next Lieutenant Governor, straight from the NYPD, Allison Esposito. Thanks, Nicole. Hello, Staten Island. Are you ready to make history? Yeah. Are you ready to save our state? Yeah. There was a debate. Why is it so important to us? Why is public safety so important? Why, Kathy Hochul asked Congressman Zeldin during the debate, why does this mean so much to you? Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a politician. I am a cop. And public safety means a hell of a lot to me! Why does it mean so much to us? It means so much because I saw babies as young as a year old shot and killed in their strollers at a barbecue, at a family barbecue, by a stray gang bullet fired by an individual with multiple firearm arrests who should never have been out on that street. Why does it mean so much to us? Because I was sending my cops out every day to remove loaded illegal firearms off the waistbands of perps, only to have the perpetrators back in my precinct collecting their property to go home before my cops were even done processing the arrest. Why does it mean so much to us? Because my cops were going out on the street with fear in their eyes. 
not the fear that they would lose their life or not make it home to their families. They understand and accept that when they raise their right hands. This fear was different. This was the fear of losing their jobs and potentially their freedom for doing the job that we ask them to do, that society needs them to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I looked at the seat I was sitting in and the hat that I was wearing, and I realized I was sitting in the wrong seat and wearing the wrong hat to affect the type of change that New York so desperately needs. Under the Zeldin Esposito administration, we will unapologetically back the blue. We will fire reckless and dangerous district attorneys that refuse to uphold their oath of office and fail to prosecute crime. We don't defund our cops, ladies and gentlemen. We fund them. We give them the training, the resources, and the tools that they need to do the job that we expect with the professionalism and the compassion that we demand. That is what we do with our police. This, this is a new wave, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a red wave. This is a common sense wave. This is a red, white, and blue wave. This is Republicans and Democrats and independents alike saying we are awake and we are coming for our state back and then we're coming for our country. What you allow will continue. What you allow will continue and we will no longer allow as New Yorkers, a government that decides or thinks they know what's best for us. You, as a parent, are responsible for the well-being of you, your family, and your children. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at 7 o'clock every night, we opened up the windows and we banged pots and pans. And we screamed for our first responders and we praised them as heroes, our doctors, our nurses our cops, our firefighters. Do you remember the essential workers, the ones the government said could go to work to put food on their table? Well, we hailed them as heroes. And then when they made the very personal decision not to take a vaccine, we fired them like they were nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, they need their jobs back and with back pay. This is time. It is time. We are on the precipice of history. We are on the precipice of history. And I believe that we win this. I do. But it's going to take each and every one of us. This can't be just the amazing candidates that I have behind me. It can't be just Congressman Zeldin and myself. This is the entire state of New York that is standing up and saying enough is enough. On November 8th, freedom is on the ballot. Public safety and security are on the ballot. And it's time that we band together. If you chain a dog to a pole and go out every day and remove one link from the chain, the dog doesn't notice anything until one day he wakes up and he has no freedom to roam. New Yorkers are not fools. Kathy Hochul believes that we are. You can't believe your eyes, she says. Crime isn't real. This is just a perception. Meanwhile, in New York City alone, we are on pace to have 30,000 extra felony victims for this year alone. Tell that to the 30,000 New Yorkers that will be impacted. When they wake up and say, is today the day... It's my turn. We are afraid to send our kids to parks. We are afraid to ride mass transit. And she believes it is a perception of fear. New Yorkers are not fools, but we need each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I heard Joe Pinion was up here before, and he may have stolen one of my lines. But I need you to talk to everyone. 
We forgot doing that. We forgot how to do that, right? We forgot to talk to people, to agree to dif- disagree, to see different perspectives, right? We forgot how to be human in this state and in this country. We have to concentrate more on what unites us and less on what divides us. We are New Yorkers. We are Americans. And it's time we talk to everyone. I need you to speak to coworkers, to colleagues, to family, to distant relatives, Joe, to Sally down the block that you don't like. And get them all out to vote because we have forgotten in this country, it is not just a right to vote. It is a duty to vote. It is an obligation to vote. And if we want to save our state and our country, we must band together and the time is now. So we got this. I walked away from my beloved police department. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. But it made it a little bit easier after I met Congressman Zeldin. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the right guy at the right time. He has a clear vision on how to restore New York State back to glory. And over the months, I got to know not just Lee, the congressman. You know, he's an army vet, paratrooper. He's a fighter. He's been fighting for New Yorkers for years. But I got to know Lee, the person, Lee, the man. And the most important thing that I can say is that not only does he have the experience and the intelligence and the background to lead us back to glory, he has the heart. He has the compassion. And when he's out there fighting for his young girls, he's fighting for your kids too. He's fighting for all of New York's children. I was humbled and honored when he asked me to be his running mate to save this state. And I believe that the two of us together, along with all of the other Republican whether it's congressmen or senators or the state ticket, we have assembly, we have attorney general, we will all restore balance back to New York State under his leadership. We will be the Empire State once again. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the man of the hour and in less than seven days now, I would love to introduce you to your next governor, Lee Zeldin! Hey, look at this Staten Island crowd. Staten Island is ready to fire Kathy Hochul. Staten Island is ready to save our state. Seven days. Seven days left until this important election where you have the future of your family and community and this state and this country in your hands. What is Staten Island going to do with it? And I'm looking out at a crowd that is ready to do everything. Do everything. Listen, we are able to guarantee, guarantee that we win this race one week from today as long as we are all doing everything in our power, taking nothing for granted. Everybody we know, family, friends, neighbors, strangers, coworkers, we have to get everybody out to the polls. We need a turnout as if this was the most important election that we've ever had. We need to vote like our life depends on it because New York leads the entire nation right now in out-migration. We want to be able to say that we live in the greatest state, in the greatest country, in the history of the world. But when we talk to others in other states and they point out, well, aren't you from that state that has more people leaving your state than every other state? Unfortunately, that that is where we live right now. 
Now, why is that? No, for months, I've asked this question of Kathy Hochul. I've asked her to finish this sentence. New York leads the entire nation in population loss because. She's actually even been asked this question by the media. But she can't answer it. Now, how can you ever expect the governor to be able to fix why everybody is leaving New York if the governor doesn't even know, understand, or recognize why people are leaving. The reason why people are leaving the state is because they're hitting their breaking point. They feel like their wallet and their safety and their freedom and the quality of their kids' education are under attack. They're looking at other states and they feel like their money will go further. They will live life safer and freer if they head elsewhere. Now, Kathy Hochul was never elected governor. Right. Kathy Hochul was elected lieutenant governor, and she's filling the remainder of someone else's term. But she walks around like she's some emperor governor running for a 15th term. <laughs> she has called on all of us New Yorkers as her apostles. She's referred to herself as the mother of New York's 62 counties. I am able to promise you that at no point would I ever look at all of you as my apostles. I promise you that I would never look at myself as the father of New York's 62 counties. She has said, because I'm challenging her, because I'm running against her, she declared that I'm no longer a New Yorker. She demanded that I get on a bus and I move to Florida. When you want to be the governor of New York, you're running to be the governor for all New Yorkers. She doesn't get that. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We are going to stay and successfully fight to save our state. I'm not here today to declare that Kathy Hochul is no longer a New Yorker. I am not here today to demand that she leaves the state. I am just putting her on warning that Staten Island is going to tell her in one week she is fired from being the governor of the state of New York. When, when we all woke up this morning, we had news of a new poll. Trafalgar now says that we are in the lead. And we are not going to look back. Campaign like we're behind no matter what. They'll t try to tell you that we have no chance. They say, look at all the, the Democrats versus Republicans. But here's the problem. Is that our coalition isn't just Republicans. It's Democrats and Independents all united as New Yorkers. We want balance restored to Albany. We want to fight what is soaring crime, violent criminals being released to roam free by DAs, crushing taxes, skyrocketing costs, and we want to hit the ground running. We don't want to waste any time. As soon as I'm sworn in, the first thing I'm going to do is tell the Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg that he's being fired. These are your streets. This is your subway. These streets belong to law-abiding New Yorkers. You should be able to get from point A to point B without having to have your head on some swivel, afraid that you might get attacked, worried about that next person who looks like they might trying to cause some confrontation of you and your family. It shouldn't be this way. And in the 80s, they told us it was just perception. They said, look away, there's nothing to see here. And then in 1993, the people of New York City decided, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, to elect Rudy Giuliani as the mayor of New York City to clean up these streets. In 1994, the state was at a crossroads. And they said that George Pataki had no shot. But at the end of the day, when the ballots were counted, by the way, it was November 8th of 1994, New York defied history 
And once again the next year, this time, they elected George Pataki as the governor of the state of New York. And I don't know about all of you, and with all apologies to Prince, I think Staten Island is ready to party like 1993 and 1994 again to take back these streets. And I got to tell you, your freedoms are earned on the back of the veterans who are here. Our safety is protected because of the courage and the heroism of all of our law enforcement who's here. And whenever we are engaging in a transaction of freedom with the government, it only goes one way. It's government giving you your freedoms back and not the other way around. You need a governor who understands that public service is about serving the public, not about being served by the public. You need a governor who's not trying to be an emperor governor, but has their feet planted firmly on the ground. Listen, I, I well understand that even in my own house, I'm the fourth highest ranking person. <laughs> by the way, I serve still. I'm in my 20th year in the Army, and I am proudly stationed right here at Fort Wadsworth on Staten Island. And I'm outranked by a whole lot of people in that unit. That keeps me grounded. And I understand that this is an intelligent bunch. You don't want to be told by your governor. You don't want to be told by your governor that what you see with your own eyes of the video of crimes being committed, what you see with your own eyes, the pictures of the crimes that are being committed, the stories told by others, the reports you see on TV. When I was standing next to Kathy Hochul on the debate stage last week, we were asked question after question after question about crime. And I pointed out, we're almost halfway through the debate. We're almost done with the crime conversation. You still haven't pointed out the whole locking up the criminal part of fighting crime. And what she said to me was that she doesn't know why this is so important to me. And when she says that she doesn't know why this is so important to me, she is saying to all of you that she doesn't understand why this is so important to all of us. This is as personal as it gets, and it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. Again, uniting as New Yorkers, we will take back our streets, and I will do my part. On day one, I will declare, I will declare what Kathy Hochul could do today, but she won't. And I will bring the state legislature to the table, even though right now they say they wouldn't. On day one, we are going to declare a crime emergency here in the state of New York. And we will suspend New York's cashless bail law, raise the age, halt act, less is more, and the discovery law changes. If the state legislature isn't going to come to represent you, I will do what is in my power to make sure the state legislature shows up here to fight on your behalf. Now, early voting in person has started, and something pretty amazing is happening on Staten Island. The last report I got said that there's actually been a bunch more Republicans than Democrats who have voted here in in-person early voting on Staten Island. That's a first. We have the momentum. We have the energy. We have the issues on our side. We're the ones who are talking about reversing the state's ban on the safe extraction of natural gas in the southern tier. We're the ones who are talking about approving new pipeline applications. We're the party that's advocating for term limits and voter ID. We're the party saying no COVID vaccine mandate on anyone, anywhere, for any reason. There should be no COVID vaccine mandate to work. No COVID vaccine mandate to access your classroom. When we were at the debate last week, Kathy Hochul said, with regards to her COVID vaccine mandate on healthcare workers, she would do it again. 
When she was asked about a COVID vaccine mandate on the kids, she would only say she wouldn't do it right now. What I say is that at no point ever in the future, in any way, shape, or form, will I support a COVID vaccine mandate. If you want to get it, get it. If you want to, if you don't want to get it, don't get it. But don't do it because I, as the governor, called on you to be my apostle. I am not there to be served by you. Everyone up in Albany and down in Washington, D.C. is there to serve the people. And the people are taking back control of their government again. And we are going to do our part to make sure that at the beginning of January, we will all be able to tune in to C-SPAN and we will watch as the gavel permanently comes out of the hands of former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. We will make sure that the gavels are coming out of the hands of Maxine Waters and Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler. We are going to restore a balance of power again down in Washington. And by the way, how many of you are interested in turning Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer? No, 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 no. Guys, I, I'm trying to give you options here. You don't have to choose the first option. Is Staten Island ready to turn Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer into former Senator Chuck Schumer and electing Joe Pinion as your next senator? We're going to elect Paul Rodriguez as our next state comptroller, and Michael Henry as our next state attorney general, and Allison Esposito as our next lieutenant governor. And we are going to do our part to make history like they did nearly three decades ago. When you go to sleep on election night, you will know that you can go to sleep with a big smile on your face because you did what they said was impossible to successfully with every ounce of energy, telling everyone we know to make sure they show up. We will once again have a Republican governor again here in the state of New York. We will have a balance of power up in Albany. We will reverse the attacks on our wallets, our safety, our freedom, and our kids' education. We're not going anywhere, Kathy Hochul. You're the one who's leaving the governor's mansion in seven days. We're staying for our state. We're going to fight for it. Losing is not an option. Thank you all. Thank you for your support. Now, one last thing, by the way, for those of you who want to stay, we're about to turn this into a set. We're about to go live on Fox News on Hannity if you want to stay. So just give us a few minutes. We're going to set up and go live with Hannity. If you could stay, fantastic. Uh, please sign up to volunteer. Make sure you vote. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for the love. Let's make sure Staten Island, Staten Island brings this home. Thank you. Let's save America and save New York. God bless. All right. Are we fired up? Yeah. Who wants to be on Fox News? Yeah. If you want to be on Fox News, stay right where you are. Once again, I want to thank Steve Bakusis from Anadel Terrace for hosting us. Always be supportive. Please, if you can, patronize his establishment and support him as well. If you want to, if you want to be on Fox News, please stay right where you are. Thank you.